Why, hello there, and welcome back. If you're new to my channel, glad to have you join us. I'm Mrs. O, here to support my parents, students, and teachers with all things math-related, ed tech, and other educational resources. In today's video, we will continue our exploration of whiteboard chat. In my last video, we went over some of the basic features, so make sure to check it out, because in today's video, we're gonna jump right into how to use some of the more fun and unique features that makes whiteboard chat an ideal whiteboard when teaching just about any subject. But for today's video, we'll focus on math. Once logged on to Whiteboard Chat, there are several ways to get started. After selecting Start Teaching, this option pops up where you can either start teaching to open up a new board, or if you already have an account, you can simply select Manage Boards. This will take you directly to the boards that you already have saved. What's great about this is that you can set up your boards in advance so that when students join your group, you won't have to use up instructional time loading assignments. And another great thing about this is that it auto saves. To view its contents, I simply select the icon that looks like an eye. Once opened up, you're able to pick up right where you left off. And as you can see here, this particular board has multiple pages. Recognizing that students perform at different levels, you can differentiate assignments and set them up in advance. Doing so, you can number the pages and assign specific pages to students, or you can add pictures, animations, so that students can readily find their group. I'm not sure about you, but when I saw that I can include animations, I got excited. So I know your students will too. To insert animations, simply go to the palette. Then you can select manipulatives. In this case, I'm going to choose the circle. Then you want to go ahead and place it. And if you want to, you can resize it. Once you get it down to the size that you like, you then go ahead and select, double clicking again, animate, move, and you have to actually trace the path that you want the object to follow. Then simply press play. And there you have it. Keep in mind that you can at any point in time simply press pause animations or continue to press play to resume animations as well. Once you've invited students to join your board, here we have a side-by-side -side view of the teacher and student board here to the right. And as you can see, the animations are spinning. And let's just say, being that this is a math drill, you wanted to set a timer, that's a possibility too. Just simply click on the clock, set the timer. And once you hit set, it will appear on the student's board. There it is. And students can complete a time test drill. And here we have an example of what we can do by changing the background. Simply click on the grid option, and we have a drop-down list that appears. You can include line paper, bigger grids, music sheet, line paper, and much more. Heading back to our original grid, here's a side-by-side -side of what it would look like for the student. And as students are working, you can monitor their work by clicking grid view. And tap on it, and you can see their progress. You can even join their board and make notations. Here's another example of what we can do with whiteboard chat. Let's say you assign students work. But before completing that assignment, you'd like to give them instructions or perhaps want them to watch a video. You can easily insert a video. To insert a video, simply select Tools, then YouTube. Click the area where you would like the video to appear. Find the URL, copy the URL, and paste it. Load the video, and there you have it. Add the details, and this is what it would look like from a student's point of view. Welcome, boys and girls. Ready to practice. One of my favorite things to do with Whiteboard Chat is to play bingo. Simply go to myfreebingocards.com. Enter a title, enter your numbers, and since I'm playing multiplication bingo, I'm going to insert multiples of three and four. When you're done, simply scroll down and ensure that you only have one card per page. Once selected, click next, and then select the 30 free card option. And this is important. You're going to select print and download the PDF. I recommend downloading two copies, a teacher copy, as well as downloading it again. You're going to select print, save as a PDF, and this is going to be your student copy that's going to be uploaded onto Whiteboard Chat. It's important to delete the first few pages and only select the bingo cards. Title that student copy, save it. Now that we've set up our bingo cards, just open up a new whiteboard, give it a title, go to Manage Book, and select Upload Bingo. Locate your file, ensure it's the student copy, and there you have it. After inviting students, 
As you can see with the student copy on the right, each student will receive their own unique bingo card. What I especially like is that as a teacher, select the grid view and you can monitor students' progress. Again, student number three has a unique board as well, looking at the numbers. And what's neat about this, if you notice that the game is dragging on and you want to speed it up, you can just simply look at students' board and determine which number to call out next. And not to forget to mention, students can choose the drawing tool to mark out their answer choices as they're called out. Well, that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed exploring Whiteboard Chat with me and we'll give it a try. Please let me know how you're using it in your classroom by commenting down below. Also, make sure to check out the description box for other videos that might interest you as well. Remember to continue to support my channel. If you haven't done so already, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to click the notification bell to stay in the loop. Until next time, take care.